Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's reading through the Bible in 365. Today, we are going to be reading 2 Chronicles chapter 28 and 29 and John chapter 17. So let's get started with 2 Chronicles chapter 28. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. He did not do what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord, as his ancestor David had done. Instead, he followed the example of the kings of Israel. He cast metal images for the worship of Baal. He offered sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, even sacrificing his own sons in the fire. Wow. In this way, he followed the detestable practices of the pagan nations the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense in the pagan shrines and on the hills and under every green tree. Because of all this, the Lord is God allowed the king of Aram to defeat Ahaz and to exile large numbers of his people to Damascus. The armies of the king of Israel also defeated Ahaz and inflicted many casualties on his army. In a single day, Pekah, son of Remaliah, Israel's king, killed 120,000 of Judah's troops, all of them experienced warriors because they had abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Then Zikri, a warrior from Ephraim, killed Maesiah, Maesiah, the king's son, um, Azrakam, the king's palace commander, and Elkanah, the king's second in command. The armies of Israel captured 200,000 women and children from Judah and seized tremendous amounts of plunder, which they took back to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord named Oded was there in Samaria when the army of Israel returned home. He went out to meet, he went out to meet them and said, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, was angry with Judah and let you defeat them, but you have gone too far, killing them without mercy, and all heaven is disturbed. And now you are planning to make slaves of these people from Judah and Jerusalem. What about your own sins against the Lord your God? Listen to me and return these prisoners you have taken, for they are your own relatives. Watch out, because now the Lord's fierce anger has been turned against you. Then some of the leaders of Israel, Azariah, son of Jeho, Jeho, Jehoanan, Jehoanan, <laughs> um, Berechiah, son of Meshillamoth, Jehizekiah, son of Shalom, and, Amath, and Amasa, son of Hadlai, agreed with this and confronted the men returning from battle. Next door neighbor's dog. You must not bring the prisoners here, they declared. We cannot afford to add our sins and guilt. Our guilt is already great, and the Lord's fierce anger is already turned against Israel. So the warriors released the prisoners as it handed over the plunder in the sight of the leaders and the people. Then the four men... Uh, oh, sorry, I lost my spot. Then the four men just mentioned by name came forward and distributed clothes from the plunder to the prisoners who were naked. The dog is going crazy next door. Drawing attention of my dogs. They provided clothing and sandals to wear, gave them enough food and drink, and dressed their wounds with olive oil. Hold on, guys. I tell you what, my dogs are so good. The next door neighbor's dog is barking at mine, and mine are just like, what? <laughs> all right. Uh, they put those who were weak on donkeys and took all the prisoners back to their own people in Jericho, the city of Psalm, oh, not, not Psalms, the city of Palms. Then they returned to Samaria. At that time, King Ahaz of Judah asked the king of Assyria for help. 
the armies of Edom had again invaded Judah and taken captives, and the Philistines had raided towns located in the foothills of Judah and in the Negev of Judah. They had already captured and occupied Beth Shemesh, Ahijalon, Jedaroth, Soko with its villages, Timna with its villages, and Gimzo with its villages. The Lord was humbling Judah because of King Ahaz of Judah, for he had encouraged his people to sin and had been utterly unfaithful to the Lord. So when King tiglath pileser of Assyria arrived, he attacked Ahaz instead of helping him. Ahaz took valuable items from the Lord's temple, the royal palace, and from the homes of his officials and gave them to the king of Assyria as tribute, but this did not help him. Even during this time of trouble, King Ahaz continued to reject the Lord. He offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus who had defeated him, for he said, Since these gods helped the kings of Aram, they will help me too, if I sacrifice to them. But instead they led to his ruin and the ruin of all Judah. The king took the various articles from the temple of God and broke them into pieces. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple so that no one could worship there. And he set up altars to pagan gods in every corner of Jerusalem. He made pagan shrines in all the towns of Judah for offering sacrifices to other gods. In this way, he aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of his ancestors. The rest of the events of Ahaz's reign and everything he did from beginning to end are recorded in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. When Ahaz died, he was buried in Jerusalem, but not in the royal cemetery of the kings of Judah. Then his son Hezekiah became the next king. <laughs> Chapter 29 Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became the king of Judah and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. In the very first month of the first year of his reign, Hezekiah reopened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He summoned the priests and Levites to meet him at the courtyard east of the temple. He said to them, Listen to me, you Levites. Purify yourselves and purify the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all the defiled things from the sanctuary. Our ancestors were unfaithful and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They abandoned the Lord and his dwelling place. They turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors to the temple's entry room and they snuffed out the lamps. They stopped burning incense and presenting burnt offerings at the sanctuary of the God of Israel. That is why the Lord's anger has fallen upon Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of dread, horror, and ridicule, as you can see with your own eyes. Because of this, our fathers have been killed in battle, and our sons and daughters and wives have been captured. But now I will make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger will turn away from us. Sorry, the dog's kind of rooting around here. My sons, do not neglect your duties any longer. The Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to lead the people in worship and present offerings to him. Then these Levites got right to work. From the clan of Kohath, Mahath, son of Amasai, and jo Joel, son of Azariah. It's Azariah, sorry. I like to pronounce that wrong. From the clan of Merari, Kish, son of Ibdi, and Azar Azariah, son of Jehalel. 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 <laughs> From the clan of Gershon, Joah son of Zima, and Eden son of Joah, from the family of Elisaphan, Shimri, and Jael, from the family of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah, from the family of Heman, Jehiel, and Shim Shimai, from the family of Judithan, Shemaiah, and Uziel. 
Um, these men called together their fellow Levites, and they all purified themselves. Then they began to cleanse the temple of the Lord, just as the king had commanded. They were careful to follow all the Lord's instructions in their work. The priests went into the sanctuary of the temple of the Lord to cleanse it, and they took out to the temple courtyard all the defiled things they found. From there, the Levites carted it all out to the Kidron Valley. They began the work in early spring on the first day of the new year, and in eight days they had reached the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then, hold on. Sorry, Brinley's getting into things. Um, they began the work in early spring on the first day of the new year, and in eight days they had reached the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then they purified the temple of the Lord itself, which took another eight days. So the entire task was completed in 16 days. Then the Levites went to King Hezekiah and gave him this report. We have cleansed the entire temple of the Lord, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the table of the bread of the presence with all its utensils. We have also recovered all the items discarded by King Ahaz when he was unfaithful and closed the temple. They are now in front of the altar of the Lord, purified and ready for use. Early the next morning, King Hezekiah gathered the city officials and went to the temple of the Lord. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, and seven male lambs as a burnt offering, together with, a, with seven male goats as a sin offering for the kingdom of the temple and for Judah. The king commanded the priests, who were descendants of Aaron, to sacrifice the animals on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bulls, and the priests took the bull, to blah, blah, and the priests took the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Next, they killed the rams and sprinkled their blood on the altar. And finally, they did the same with the male lambs. The male goats for the sin offering were then brought before the king and the assembly of people who laid their hands on them. The priests then killed the goats as a sin offering and sprinkled their blood on the altar to make atonement for the sins of all Israel. The king had specifically commanded that this burnt offering and sin offering should be made for all Israel. King Hezekiah then stationed the Levites at the temple of the Lord with cymbals, lyres, and harps. He obeyed all the commands that the Lord had given to King David throughout, or, you know, through Gad, the king Seir, and the prophet Nathan. The Levites then took their positions around the temple with the instruments of David, and the priests took their positions with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah ordered that the burnt offering be placed on the altar. As the burnt offering was presented, songs of praise to the Lord were begun, accompanied by the trumpets and other instruments of David, the former king of Israel. The entire assembly worshipped the Lord as the singers sang and the trumpets blew, until all the burnt offerings were finished. Then the king and everyone with him bowed down in worship. King Hezekiah and the officials ordered the Levites to praise the Lord with the psalms written by David and by Asaph the seer. So they offered joyous praise and bowed down in worship. Then Hezekiah declared, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, bring your sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings to the temple of the Lord. So the people brought their sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings, and all whose hearts were willing brought burnt offerings too. The people brought to the Lord 70 bulls, 100 rams, and 200 male lambs for burnt offerings. They also brought 600 cattle and 3,000 sheep and goats as sacred offerings. But there were too few priests to prepare all the burnt offerings. So the relatives, the Levites, helped them until the work was finished and more priests had been purified, for the Levites had been more conscientious about purifying themselves than the priests had been. There was an abundance of burnt offerings along with the usual liquid offerings and a great deal of fat from the many peace offerings. So the temple of the Lord was restored to service. And Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced 
because of what God had done for the people, for everything had been accomplished so quickly. Moving on to John chapter 17. After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give you glory, so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, the only true God, oh boy, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Sorry about that. The neighbor dog is barking at Brindley. Um, where did I leave off? Let's just start with verse 2. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that it came from you, and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from this world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost, except the one headed for destruction, as the scriptures foretold. Now I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your, world, your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, <coughs> excuse me, as you are in me, Father. And I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do, and these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Thank you for joining me for today's reading through the Bible in 365. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.